Welcome and thanks a lot for joining my talk. My name is Evelyn Gurschlau. I work at BMW as a developer and I'm a committer at the Eclipse Tractus X project. Yeah, I'm working since the end of the, uh, 2021 um, for the development of the Katina X data space, where I was deeply involved in into DevOps topic, which leads me to the name of my of my talk, charting new data spaces with Katina X, where I'm gonna actually talk about the deployment of Katina X. So, first. I will give you a first um, a con some context about Katina X and how the Eclipse Tractus X project is connected to it, because otherwise I think you would be a bit lost. Then I will um, jump in the, into the main topic of my talk, which is deploying a data space. And there I will first talk about what we are gonna deploy, so the scope and the challenges which we are facing. And then, yeah, jump into the approach from the Tractus X project. Last but not least, I want to actually be just, uh, to be a show and tell kind of talk. So I have a demo prepared, and I hope that uh, yeah, the demo got in my favor, that uh, everything is gonna be working out. And I'm gonna showcase how we use the general deployment approach for um, which also Tractus X uses a as a whole in our internal development team for local development. So let's jump into the first topic, which is Katina X. So Katina X is an is a, um, open data ecosystem in order to, uh, to um, yeah, increase the efficiency and transparency within the supply chain in the automotive, in the automotive sector. And it actually um, does have a, a lot of uh, solutions provided, like um, to increase the the transparency along the supply chain for in order to trace parts, for instance, but also in the areas of circular economy and sustainability. Yeah, it's, um, it's um, all the solutions which Katina X provides, uh, provide, they operate under a common principle set, which the, ma the most important one is actually data serenity and decentralized um, data exchange but also interoperability is a really important one. So what's Eclipse Tractus X? E Eclipse Tractus X is the reference implementation of Katina X and it's hosted on, on GitHub and it's actually a really big open source project. And there are uh, over 200 developers with, um, provided by over 30 companies, and one could do an entire talk about it, which actually my colleague Sebastian is gonna do tomorrow. So um, I actually suggest, highly suggest to also join his talk tomorrow. But I would uh, just uh, like to take the occasion also to just thank um, the, our, the mentors from the Clicks Foundation of, um, and also our open source expert, um, for the daily support in order to get this project organized and running. Yeah, so um, with this, having a bit of context now, I jump into the main topic of deploying a data space or Katina X. So, and for this, I painted a picture in order to just bring a bit down the, the scope of what we want to deploy. And yeah, at least in my opinion, this is a bit overwhelming. So I want to go with you through the process of how I ended up with it, just adding up one indicator after another, um, which I considered for this picture. So the first indicator which I considered was the amount of applications. So at the current state um, in time, we have about 16 um, applications which need to be deployed and also upgraded in one single unit. And there are constantly new ones added and uh, the, the existing ones are further developed and also then need to be upgraded. And yeah, it's also worth mentioning that um, yeah, in a, once this, uh, when this framework is actually used in a production environment, so the reference implementation, they also added additional um, commercial apps. So this is, just ref this is just referring to the, to the open source components which we are developing in the, um, in the Tractor 6 open source project. Yeah, the next indicator which I considered may for just getting um, an idea to you um, what um, what could um, yeah what about the deployment deployment scope is 
the interface dependencies. There are actually quite a lot. Some components are more connected than others. But uh, yeah, that's for sure something to consider in my opinion. And last but not least, for this picture, I considered the infrastructure dependencies, where you, um, the Postgres is actually the, the most important one, but there are also some other ones. So, um, yeah, the point of this whole drawing exercise was actually to get to another question, which is, um, what are the challenges from, ha from having to manage such a deployment scope? And, yeah, there I um, actually identified three, so already given a heads up. Um, and the first one was just to getting a comprehensive overview of all the applications and its dependencies, either infrastructure and also the um, yeah, interface-wise. The other one is version alignment. I mentioned it already. Those components need to be installed and also upgraded as a one single unit. And yeah, their um, management of configura configuration value is the last, uh, uh, the last challenge which I identified where I would actually like to go in a, to a real life example. So I'm a developer at the uh, at at the application portal, which is the entry point to the data space. And we um, are actually one of the applications which has most interface dependencies. And yeah, just keeping track of all the interface addresses alone as they are constantly change and changing and also newly new ones are added is um, one challenge. But yeah, those, interf and those interface addresses are also used in, uh, this, uh, in the services from, uh, from our backend and frontend, um, yeah, um, many times, um, some, um, depending on the interface, and just to make the, the um, yeah, it overall consistent, that the, that the interface addresses are overall consistent in the scope of the application, is, in my opinion, uh, uh, from my practical experience, a challenge alone. So I would not go and yeah, display challenges without also showing uh, yeah, now the solutions and hopefully we can make the connection there. Yeah, how do we manage those challenges? And there I just want to give you the baseline that we use a container deployment managed by Kubernetes. So in a nutshell, um, Kubernetes manages containers and also provides a storage network and um, yeah, additional feature in order, features in order for everything to run. And yeah, actually, it, cannot, it is to be considered a first line of defense for managing the deployment com complexity. Just making an example um, that um, the applications are running in containers, and so we encapsulate um, them, and um, every, every application can have its runtime at disposal, as we also have um, applications with different runtimes. So that's um, one benefit, but there are for sure a lot of others. But one key benefit from using Kubernetes is uh, that I would actually also like to put on the slide is actually the portability um, across infrastructure providers. We are decoupled from infrastructure. And um, yeah, that's especially, I'm talking about the open source reference implementation in my point, the key benefit from using such, an, such a deployment approach. There are others, but um, yeah, um, actually I don't want to go too deep into Kubernetes. I actually want to talk about what we use on top of Kubernetes. And that is Helm. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. And, um, and yeah, a powerful templating engine. So in template files, you can describe uh, functions and variables in order to, um, yeah, to describe your Kubernetes resources. And the packaging format from, um, from Helm is called Helm Charts, which um, is essentially a bundle of YAML files and template files. Um, and um, yeah, it's just a very convenient way to, to, manage, uh, to manage your Kubernetes resources. But yeah, for this, I would actually like to just show you one of my Helm charts because um, <laughs> I'm not big on just um, uh, saying things in theory. So let's just go through um, a Helm chart. So this is um, um, a Helm chart normally follows um, a certain directory structure. It's, it's stored under a chart. Um, chart name directory and yeah in this car in this case it's the portal and um, it um, always contains a certain set of files like the chart yaml file which actually 
does provide all the meta information for the chart. So the name, the, the version, and also infrastructure dependencies or in general dependencies, like in this case of a database. And yeah, another very important file is the values YAML file, where um, values are stored which are referenced um, in files which again are stored in the templates directory. Yeah, and that's uh, um, the not quite yet ready to be deployed um, artifacts on Kubernetes or Kubernetes resources, and they all contain references um, to this values YAML file. And um, what this referencing um, following a values dot syntax allows us um, is to maintain um, a configuration value in just in just one place. Like for instance, for this central IDP address, this is con to be considered an interface address. Um, it allows us to maintain it in in one place and then use it in. Let's search for it. Twenty five times within those template files. And yeah, the, the magic behind it is that once um, Helm install is executed, um, those references are actually resolved into the values um, from, from the values file. And yeah, um, also just mentioning here, those default values which are in here can also be easily overwritten, so to environment specific values. So now we have seen a Helm chart and maybe um, could you give me an idea if uh, somebody in the room uses Helm charts on a daily basis? Okay. Yeah, yeah, then, then it's, I figured, great. So, in the past, okay. Yeah, but um, with this, just give, having given you a bit of an, an idea about um, how Helm chart looks like, I would actually like to go into the topic how how um, in Tractus X, in the open source reference implementation project from Katina X, we are using Helm charts. And yeah, all the applications which I earlier showed you are the picture, and I'll just show you here, they need to provide a Helm chart. Um, yeah, and also those Helm charts need to follow certain, certain criteria, like for instance, the dependencies, the infrastructure dependencies need to be listed in, the, in, the, in this metadata file, which I just showed you. And yeah, they also need to be released, which um, which brings me to our chart repository. Released Helm charts can be collected in our repository, which gives an easy way for everybody outside of our organization to access, download, and use our Helm charts. So um, this is essentially a uh, way to get an easy overview about all the charts and this chart repository does nothing else than uh, scanning our, our GitHub organization and just collecting it all in one place in an index YAML file and so that they can be um, used and downloaded. And yeah, one other aspect what really is convenient about this chart repository is that it supports our release process very well as every uh, release documentation change logs which, which is communicated over our, our, our mailing lists um, uh, contains also a reference to a table where all the Helm charts with the according app version are listed for the according release. So we are doing um, in the Tractus X projects um, releases about four times a year. That's also probably a good information at this point. Yeah. So I gave you now an idea about how we use Helm charts um, on a daily basis, but I also want to give you an outlook uh, on what we are working on. So we are actually striving for a, a so-called umbrella Helm chart, which would allow us to install um, yeah, the entire data space just with one Helm install comment. Yeah, an umbrella Helm chart is um, essentially just a collection of individual charts and you add them as subcharts or dependencies, and um, yeah, as a result, you can install all those um, all those applications with one Helm install on the top level chart, so on the umbrella chart. Yeah. So, and yeah, we are currently testing this approach for the for our, for our, um, end to end automation testing, but it's still in the making. But um, this general approach of an umbrella Helm chart can be beneficial also with a, a bit of smaller scope 
which is actually which leads me actually to my demo, because we use an umbrella Helm chart for local development. And um, yeah, so let's jump to the demo. And yeah, I, if anybody had the hopes that I'm gonna ramp up an entire data space on this poor machine, that's not happening. Um, I'm just uh, focusing on the components which I'm um, actually responsible for, which is uh, the portal application and also the identity and access management solution for um, in the Tractus X project. And I. But we'll use for this uh, Minikube, which is a great solution to get um, a local um, Kubernetes cluster ramped up. It's also just very easy to get in contact and learn Kubernetes. So I, actually, I really um, suggest to anybody who wants to get familiar with Kubernetes to try it out. It's really easy also to install. And what, I, what we will install in, in the demo is the is the umbrella chart called local dev, so for our local development. And yeah, in the in the normal and in the normal day-to-day -day developer life of my of my developer team, or, um, which I'm also part of, we just use this um, this umbrella chart to integrate the locally running component into this setup by replacing the according value in the values YAML file. So the, for instance, if um, the front-end developer wants to uh, go through our, for our, for our backend, they can just um, use the backend provided from the, uh, the portal backend provided in this setup and um, connect the, the locally running front-end service to test against it. Yeah, but for the demo, we will do um, the verify step of the setup, so there's a readme which we're gonna follow, and there's also a verify step where we just uh, gonna do the login flow into the portal over the two identity and access management instances which is we, for which we use Keycloak, an open source solution. And yeah, what this actually um, <coughs> allows us is also to, to get an idea about the main entry point into, into the Katina X data space. So, mm, nice side effect um, from it is not just that we get a bit familiar with Kubernetes, but also um, to get an idea and uh, showcase the, the portal application. So, let's go to the demo. Okay, so... I'm just gonna do again clear here. Yeah, so uh, this is the readme which I, I um I'm going to follow. It's it's located in uh, in our Eclipse um Tractus X organization in the portal backend repository. And I already want to tell you that you can just follow uh, also this readme without any issues. You just need to install Minikube and you can then ramp up the portal on your own and also the Keycloak instances um, if you'd like. So this, um, um, for I already, um, for in, in order to start Minikube, it just um, one common comment is sufficient. It's the Minikube start comment. So, and this uh, takes a couple of seconds. And what I like to do for an easy access to the Kubernetes cluster and get an idea about the state is um, to use the, the dashboard provided by the dashboard provided by it. It's a really, it's, a, it's a essentially a UI. But if you are, you are always, uh, obviously you can kubectl around all of this, that's completely fine as well. But I think especially for beginners, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to, to just um, use the dashboard to get an idea about all the components. So um, we just saw that the Minikube starter, uh, cluster is now started. And we just are um, going to have a look. Yeah, so that's the, here the, mini cube, the cluster which we are running. And yeah, it looks all fine. There are the workloads and yeah. So for the setup to work, it's a local setup. So I, there is some network setup need, needed in advance and also some TLS setup. So self-signed, um, I, I actually did implement self-signed um, certificates, for especially for the communication between the Keycloak instances. 
um, but um, I don't need to do that now again. I can just um, go to the to the install of the chart, where I also don't need to add the the chart um, again from the um, from the repository. I can just use this help install command, which I copied, and I'm installing it into. Uh, into the, yeah, maybe it's a bit short here, into the uh, local dev namespace. Yeah, and now this is taking a bit, but we can follow along the de deployment on here. Yeah, that's really small, okay. Um, but yeah, maybe I just scroll a bit and make it a bit wider. Yeah, so the components here, the so-called pots, are turning green. Yeah, and the component component which normally takes the longest is the, the key clock instance. So I normally also follow a bit along the, the stack trace here. Uh, the log trace. Yeah, it's currently still starting up. So, but just mention again, here you can get an easy overview about all the components, like um, specific to Kubernetes, like stateful sets, or also jobs. Okay, yeah, now we also got our deployment um, state from Helm back, so we can also just Leave the terminal now, now B and just make all of this here a bit wider. Yeah, and um, with this we can actually see if the verification step of the of the README works, which I introduced a bit earlier already. For the verification step, we are going to do the log inflow from the portal over the two key clock instances. And um, yeah, I mentioned that I use self-signed certificates, so it can be, now it will be, um, that you need to just um, got a certificate warning on your browser, but um, probably it still remembers in my case. So let's just see, yeah, it does remember. And let's just open this one again, also I need the readme. So what we, um, what we did, we did access now the portal, and we were redirected to, to one of the key clock instances where we are doing an identity provider login. And maybe also, I think it should be okay if I make it a bit less wide, okay. And now we are redirected to the second key clock instance. And for this initial setup, and as I, um, as I mentioned, it's just meant for local development, this entire setup, I, um, I provided the initial credentials for the first login um, in the readme. So this is the username. and the password. Yeah, and with this, we are logged into the, the portal application, which um, is a bit big here. And yeah, maybe maybe at the point is essentially, I don't have too much time in this, in this talk. Maybe you just need now to check out the local dev umbrella Helm chart, install it on your own in order to get a better look at the at the, at the portal application, it's uh, really easy. So um, I just gonna get back to, to my talk now. And so there we are. Yeah, the backup video, video we did not need, great. So let's come to the, to the takeaways of this, uh, of this, of this talk. So, in essence, um, Helm, chart, uh, Helm chart support us just uh, keeping an overview of all the of all application and its dependencies, infrastructure, and also um, interface-wise, and just bringing them into a deployable unit. And also, when it comes to uh, um, keep track, track of versioning, because um, the Helm charts they can be versions um, that we saw that in the metadata file. Um, moreover, it's also a, um, a powerful tool for templating and, um, as a result, managing configuration. Um, so in recap, Helm and Helm charts help us to manage deployment complexity. So um, 
but that being said, deploying our data space is still challenging. We are always improving there. We have um, still a road ahead. And um, yeah, maybe the, the umbrella home charts becomes, becomes um, a reality in the next couple of weeks, months. That would be great. And last but not least, I again ask you to check out my umbrella helm chart. Um, it's really easy if you would like to get an, um, an, an overview about uh, Kubernetes with Minikube and also are interested maybe in Katina X to uh, get a look at the reference implementation at the portal, which is the entry point. Yeah, and with this, uh, we are um, at the Q&A part of the session. Are there any Questions? Ah. A simple question. Did I get you right that the umbrella helm chart um, consists of all single helm charts for the full Tractus X project, right? Yeah, that's the plan. So currently in my demo, I just showed that it um, um, that there are only three components of the entire data space, but the plan is to have one chart where which contains all the applications as, uh, as dependencies. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so, so the actual question would be, do you recommend to run the full Tractus X that you said is quite big on a single Minikube instance? That could be limited, you know? No, for local development, it um, makes sense to just use the components which um, which are relevant. Um, but in general, for the general deployment approach, it can be useful to um, put the, the components which make sense to be deployed together into one chart. But it's just convenient. But um, just also mentioning that um, in order to abstract a bit the complexity, I, I did, and some of the components are also decentral, like we have a connector which connects the companies between each other. So those are actually components which need to be deploy, deployed um, for every company and um, can, so there still needs to be added. Uh, that, that is a decentral component, yeah. yeah Okay, maybe I have a follow-up question, because if you are developing single component, do you have some kind of integration environment when you can check how it works in the with the other components, or do you need to deploy everything on your single machine, because this uh, chart was very, very big? Um, yeah, we have an integration environment, mm -hmm. and that's um, what we do. So um, we um, normally um, uh, work from release to release. We um, actually starting right now into our next integration testing phase to be ready for the for the release, which is coming up in December. So there were all the interfaces which I showed you in the picture earlier are then tested again, and yeah. Okay, so seeing size of the project, that would be interesting talk to talk how how it's working between all those projects uh, in that integration environment looks like. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. So. Just no, just an idea. Yeah, yeah, great idea. Hi. Uh, you mentioned that um, you can also update with Helm charts, so uh, I know that's true. Um, but for certain components that manage state, like Postgres, for example, you needed to do mm. a little bit more than yeah. just update a new container. So, um, have you considered using operators, uh, the concept of operators for such a thing? Yeah, for me, especially um, having the key clock um, instance in my responsibility, we are actually considering also um, using the operator, but I actually also considering it using via a Helm chart because it's not something which is, um, yeah, um, you can use also, you can package the operator also in a Helm chart and then provide it also to... Um, to right, but still, if you would update Postgres, then it would not start up because the database yeah. would not match. Yeah. So there we, you would need some extra manual work, mm -hmm. which you could automate with an operator. Yeah, uh, considering we are considering that, and it's a really nice um, solution in order to manage the sta stateful sets, that's um, for sure. Um, yeah, but up to now, we don't use an operator, Yeah, but looking into it. Uh, very nice uh, talk, by the way. Um, so, a side question. I assume that all the components that you show in one of the first slides have to be deployed in a single cluster, like in a company. Uh, is it correct? Uh, um, so, each company has to have all, all those components running, isn't it? 
that's a great question. So um, essentially, some of the some of the components are managed by the so-called operating um, company, which manage most of the um, most of the components. So there is one company which um, just also provides the onboarding to the data space, and they provide also most of the components. Um, but there are the, then there are other components which are also part of the picture, where which needs where every company needs to have. So there's the connector component, which um, every company needs to have to be part of the data space. So that one um, is for sure it makes sense to just keep it in one Helm chart because that one um, is good if it's deployable on its own. So. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the second question is, uh, what what are the requirements in terms of connectivity between companies and, and the operating co company that you were mentioning here? So do, do we have to set up uh, VPNs? Do, do we have to uh, expose the services to the public internet? So what, what's the suggestion there? Um, yeah, I would. Uh, I'm. I'm not too deep into that topic, um, but I can give you afterwards some information to the according repository to the. Um, yeah, it's called the Eclipse Data Space Connector. Um, and also, if you want to want to know more about it, I can provide you the information. But I'm not the expert for that topic, unfortunately. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you then. And yeah, then I'm outside. If you still have questions, it's not the last opportunity. And thank you. Thanks again. And um, evaluate my talk. Thank you. Yeah.